Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie. Um, today I'll be talking about this Japanese spider crab. I'll be talking about like some, you know, brief information, um, its habitat, and also its feeding, like what it eats and how it finds its food. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so some information about the Japanese spider crab is that they live up to be a hundred years. Um, they do hold the, the title of the crab with the longest lifespan of any of the crabs. Um, so from one, one claw to the other, they measure up to 13 feet. So they're pretty, you know, their width is pretty crazy long. Um, the crab weighs about from 35 to 45 pounds. Um, it also claims the title of the lar largest crab, crab, sorry. All right. And um, so the habitat of the Japanese spider crab. Um, the Japanese spider crab lives on the Pacific side of the Jap of Japan, as far south as Taiwan. Um, right here, I'm kind of like just circling the area of where it's found, um, where they reside, really. But um, they do reside in the chilly depths of the Pacific Ocean, ranging from 164 feet to as low as 1,640 feet as well. Okay, so uh, the habitat of the Japanese spider crab continued. So they inhabit in the sandy bottom of the continental shelf. I provided a picture here on the right. They do um, migrate into shallow water once a year for spawning, which is um, when they lay eggs to reproduce. Um, once the babies are born, um, they just stay, you know, in the shallow, warmer water. And they do migrate to the deeper edge of the water as, you know, they get older. Okay, so um, now the feeding of the Japanese spider crab. They do feed off of deceased animals and shellfish. Um, spider crabs are omnivores, so this means that they eat both uh, plants and animals. They don't have a preference, really. And then here's a short clip of them being fed. Today we're feeding them giant clams. It's one of their favorites. It kind of mimics what they encounter out in the wild. They live up to a thousand feet uh, deep underwater. They mainly feed on carrion, so they wait days, weeks, even for carrion to fall from you know the surface. They love grabbing them and ripping them apart, and it's really fun to watch. So as you saw in the video, um, they do use their claws to rip apart clams, which is pretty awesome. It's really interesting to look look at. So how do they obtain their food? Um, the Japanese spider crabs obtain their food by stalking their prey, but they don't hunt. They don't like chase after other animals, but they do prefer to scavenge for dead animals or plant matter. Um, examples of foods they eat are algae, algae plants such as uh, kelp and seagrass. Um, they also eat mollusks, which are snails, squids, um, oysters, octopus, and they also eat those small fish that look like, I believe they're called a school of fish. They also eat those too though. And that's my end of my part. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bridget Garcia and we will be for we will be further learning more about the Japanese spider crab in the following three sections which are reproduction, special or unusual abilities, and interactions with humans. So let's get started. Let me share my screen. Okay, so reproduction. The Japanese spider crab moves to the shallower end, which is approximately 160 feet of their depth range during mating season, which lasts from January until April. Fertilization is internal when mating. The Japanese spider crab oppose each other. As you could see in the following 
right hand lower corner, there is a picture of two Japanese spider crabs mating. The male inserts sperm into the abdomen of the female using their claws. Females do have the capacity to carry up to 1 million eggs, but each leg is about 0 0.3 inches long, so it's super tiny, hence the female's ability to carry up to so many eggs, although not many eggs will survive the hatch. Those that do survive the hatch will hatch in approximately 10 days and do not receive prenatal care. Special or unusual abilities. The Japanese spider crabs belong to a group known as the decorator crabs. The decorator crabs are known to defense to defend themselves against predators. They have an ability to camouflage, hence the term decorator. They have the ability um, to camouflage itself with its surroundings. When the crab is startled, it will first give off a warning and wave its pincers over its head. The legs of the Japanese spider crab are weak and a study found that in three-fourths of the surveyed crabs were missing at least, were missing one limb at least. This is because the long legs of the crabs are weak, hence the limb injury. The smaller and younger crabs decorate themselves with things such as kelp. It is much easier and um, it is certainly more better for the smaller crabs to be able to, de to decorate themselves with other items found at sea because the older and much bigger crabs do not have this advantage. Interactions with humans. So there is no significant human impact on species, but humans do consume them. I've never heard of the Japanese cider crab until now, but they are very popular in Japan and they are known, the people from Japan are known to enjoy them for lunch. They cook them in Various ways, one could be with sushi or as a salted and steamed delicacy. The, the crabs are on the pricier side in US dollars. It converts to about $500. So not everyone could afford this delicacy. Although no need to worry, the crabs are not endangered. They are consumed. They are consumed, but not in such big amount. All right, that is it for my portion. Hey guys, my name is Bianca, and I'm here to talk about some things you didn't know about Japanese spider crabs. First of all, they can grow to be over 12 feet long. Despite its small spider-like appearance, the Japanese spider crab is actually huge. Scientists and researchers estimate that this crab can weigh up to 44 pounds, and can have a leg span of 13 feet at their largest. Not only does this mean that this crab could actually tower over you if it wanted to, but it makes it the largest crab in the entire world. It's important to note though, that this creature really is mostly legs with its body only reaching about a foot and a half across in size. But that's what makes their appearance so terrifying. They start off nearly microscopic in size when they hatch, so they're not always this big. If you've ever gone swimming in Japan, you probably brushed past a thousand of these crabs and didn't even know it. The reason for this is that they look nothing like crabs when they first hatch. First off, these crabs lay a lot of eggs, like a lot, like a million. After the mother crab carries the eggs around, they hatch into tiny round plankton-like babies that are so small and primitive you could barely see them. 
these plankton crab larvae float around and grow slowly over the course of around seven days before they actually begin to look like anything. They can actually survive after losing their limbs, like their legs. These crabs are crazy resilient. You see, Japanese spider crabs can quite happily survive while missing up to three of their own limbs. That means they can still wander around after an octopus rips off a leg of theirs, as if nothing had happened at all. What's more is that there's evidence of these guys actually regenerating their legs on their own. So even if one goes missing, they're likely just to shrug it off and regrow a fresh one over the next few years. People actually eat these crabs as a delicacy. They're pretty pricey and are considered a fancy dish at seafood restaurants, especially in Japan. Those who have actually had the rare opportunity to try the crab describe it being so flavorful that they only need to put a squeeze of lemon on it because the flavors are so rich inside the crab. These crabs are pretty expensive and are estimated to be worth at least $500. Their claws can seriously injure you. Although the legs of these spider crabs are very spindly, they're also quite muscular. They don't often hunt their prey, but they can move quickly when needed thanks to their really long legs and are able to kill smaller animals with ease. Their claws are also strong and large enough to pry open muscles and clamps in order to get the nutrients they need inside. Now that I shared some interesting facts, I'm going to share this short clip about the Japanese spider crab to help you guys get a better understanding of it. Tourists love to go scuba diving. They plunge themselves into the depths of the ocean in search of the wondrous sights of beautiful fish and astounding coral reefs. But what if they encounter something else? What happens when they run into the stuff that nightmares are made of? What happens when they run into the Japanese spider crab? These chilling crustaceans are basically giant underwater spiders. One big difference being that they have claws strong enough to seriously damage human beings. Japanese spider crabs can have a leg span of over three meters and can weigh almost 20 kilograms big enough to be capable of devouring a human child. In case that's not scary enough, they can camouflage themselves to appear like just another part of the ocean floor until it's too late. Are these crabs as scary as they seem? Why do some people believe they're immortal? And is it true that they eat dead bodies? How many of us float atop the surface of the ocean riding waves or catching rays without even realizing the mysteries that lurk in the abyss beneath us? One of these mysterious creatures living 150 to 300 meters down is the Japanese spider crab, the largest crab in the world. How safe would you feel in a tank with one of these things? At the end of its extremely long legs are claws that are known to be very strong and pry open muscles and clams much faster than you could. And you might not even be able to see where they are. Spider crabs belong to a group of decorator crabs that cover their shells with items from their habitats to camouflage and protect themselves from predators. Maybe the most unsettling feature of these ocean dwellers is their apparent immortality. Spider crabs are known to easily lose limbs to predators and human nets, but they can survive while missing up to three limbs and can even regenerate them throughout their long lives. These crabs can live to 100 years, sometimes even more. As they get older, they also get bigger through a process called molting, in which they grow a new exoskeleton. The largest crab ever caught, affectionately known as Crabzilla, was almost three meters long and weighed about 20 kilograms. Although they may seem scary, they're actually not that intimidating. And molting is one of their first signs of vulnerability. As they grow bigger, their protective exoskeleton becomes too tight. Molting is the process of growing a new shell to replace the old one. The crab will take in a lot of water so that the body swells up and forms a crack in their shell that they can crawl out of. Once they're out of their shell, their soft body is exposed for approximately a week while their new shell hardens up. In that time, they're very vulnerable to predators like octopuses and stingrays. To most marine life, spider crabs aren't really seen as predators. They are the vultures of the ocean as they rely on scavenging to provide their next meal. They pick at dead and decaying matter along the seabed, both plants and animals. 
It's the animal eating that led to the mariner legend of these crabs dragging sailors overboard and eating them alive. While it's certainly not true, it's definitely plausible that these crabs would feast upon any drowned dead bodies that might come their way. If left undisturbed, they'll pretty much never cross paths with a human being. And even the humans who work with them say that they're gentle giants who are just curious about the world around them. So while they may look like something out of a horror movie, Japanese spider crabs are yet another example of why you should never judge a book by its cover. And that's why they're a crazy creature. I hope that YouTube video brought a good understanding about what the Japanese spider crabs are about. Now we could just end this presentation with an easy game of Japanese spider crab trivia. Let's begin. Female Japanese spider crabs can lay up to how many eggs? That's right, one million. All right, let's try one more. Common nickname for Japanese spider crabs are That's right, decorator crabs. Let's do another one. Japanese spider crabs cost around approximately blank US dollars to purchase. That's right, 500 US dollars to purchase. Pretty pricey, I know. Well, that concludes our presentation. I hope you guys got a good general understanding of what the Japanese spider crab species is about and enjoyed the presentation. Thank you for watching.